Hi and welcome back to the Journey to Nebula Sew Along. I'm Julie Herman of Jaybird Quilts and I'll be your guide on this journey. This week we are going to work on piecing the half hexagons that we cut last week to make a Lucky Charm pillow. So let's get started. Where we left off last week was with pairs of half hexagons and the next step according to the pattern is laying them out. So where I start with this since it's on the scrappier side is I pick generally my favorite or one that I think I want to stand out. So in this case, I'm gonna pick this blue and I place that in the middle. And then I build around it kind of like a traditional grandmother's flower garden. I do my next six with a good variety of color, good mix. And then I just continue building from there. So for the purposes of TV time, I will probably speed this up so you guys don't have to watch me do this. Okay, so now we have everything placed um, as shown on the inside of the pattern. We have mostly full hexagons and a couple half hexagon pieces to fill in at the top and the bottom of the pillow. And now we need to worry about our right and left sides. And for these, we're gonna take our remaining 10 half hexagons and we're going to cut them in half vertically. Easiest way to do that is to just take your half hexagon Fold it in half, give it a little bit of a finger crease, open it up, grab a ruler and a rotary cutter, give it a little bit of a snip there, and now these are cut in half and each one will fill in one space. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all 10 of these in half. As you can now see, I cut the remaining half hexagons in half and filled in my right and left sides. So now I'm ready to get started on sewing my rows together. I'll show you alignment closer at the sewing machine because it'll be easier to show you in detail, but we're gonna be sewing this together in rows following the pattern. Now that we have everything cut and laid out, we're ready to begin sewing our rows. And the first step here is sewing two half hexagons together. Eventually we will have those corner pieces. I usually leave them till the end. So depending on whether or not you started with a charm pack or two and a half inch strips will change some of what you do here. So I'm gonna walk you through both. So if you started with charm square, you're not gonna have that full notch because you're missing a tiny bit. And that's okay, it's in our seam allowance. But this little piece that you cut off is gonna help us line things up. So make sure you can see this, yep, okay. So we're going to put them right sides together and this straight edge is gonna come right to where that flat was and the flat is gonna go right to the straight edge of the orange piece here. And then in this case, I'm gonna pin because I really don't want it to slide and I got it perfectly lined up. So I'm gonna pin and I'm gonna sew my quarter of an inch seam. If you had a little bit narrower than five inches and you don't have that bottom mark, it might be a little bit of trial and error to find out exactly where your alignment is. But the goal is that once you sew your quarter of an inch seam, that you have a straight line at the top and a straight line at the bottom. So you wanna make sure one piece isn't um, higher than the other. You wanna make sure that they stay lined up. So we'll sew that in a second. Now, if you cut from a two and a half inch strip, you will have that full notch. So this is, then it seems a lot similar to last week um, with our diamonds. You're just gonna right sides together. I wasn't sure the right side on that one. Right sides together, line up those notches. And again, just put little pins. And this is something that you don't have to do at the sewing machine. Um, in order to ensure your layout, I would actually do this over um, on my cutting board where I had everything laid out, but I wanted to be able to zoom in to show you a little closer where we're lining things up. So machine settings, same as last week. Um, I've got my needle moved over just to a scant quarter of an inch and I'm using a 2.5 inch stitch length with my favorite Aurifil, which is 2600, it's a medium gray. So let's get to sewing. I 
And if you have your pins far enough over, you won't need to worry about taking them out. Definitely don't want to sew over pins. Okay, so let's see how our first one turned out. Let's take our pins out. And I do suggest pressing these seams open as well as last week. Um, you could press them one way and nest. This is one of the few projects where you could do that, but you're not gonna be able to do that for most of the other ones as well as Nebula. So I wanna get you comfortable, plus pressing them open really helps them to lay flat. So I'm gonna press that open and I'm very happy. I've got a straight line down here and I've got a straight line up here. So not sure where my seam roller ran away to, but I'm gonna find my seam roller, roll that seam, and then I'm gonna keep going, piecing pairs together until I have all my rows sewn together. Now that we have all of our rows pieced, it's time to piece those rows together. And step one is laying everything back out on your cutting table. It's helpful if you've taken a photo, make sure everything lines back up correctly. Now, a couple differences from last week. First is that all of our long seams at this point are straight of grain. So we're not working with any bias. We've already sewn all of our bias into our seams. Second, is we have angles going in both directions. So that tip I gave you last week about taking the two and peeling it up and viewing, is not as practical this week because we're gonna have seams going in both directions. Because of that, I suggest pinning rows together. So let's move these down here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the top two rows and I'm gonna pin those together like this. And what, some people have fork pins, that's super handy because um, you can put one on either side of the seam or you can just put two pins, which is what I usually do. Um, I usually just put one little pin and another one and then I'll come to the next and you'll see sometimes I didn't cut my, my little dog ears off so they'll be in the seam allowance just like last week, not a problem if they're there, wouldn't bother taking the time to trim them off. And so I'm gonna continue pinning all my intersections and then I'll double check, make sure I have some whole hexagons there. And then after I pin this row, I'm gonna pin these, these, so forth and so on, so that I have five pairs. So all of my pairs together. So now that I have my rows pieced and pinned together, I'm gonna to sew this long seam. And as I mentioned, I pinned everywhere because I can't really do that peel back method so it's basically just straight quarter inch seam. I will suggest though that you pull out your pins as you go. You never want to sew over a pin. It's very bad for your sewing machine. You can break needles and do other damage so make sure you pull out your pins as you go. And you can backstitch at the beginning and end of this strip if you want, since there will be nothing added to these once we get all the rows pieced together. So go ahead now and piece all your row pairs together, press them, and then continue to piece until you have your pillow top finished. One thing I forgot to mention last week is when I press, we do use lots of steam. I didn't have the steam turned on on my iron last week um, because it was making too much noise in the background, but I do press with lots of steam, um, especially to get those seams super flat that we pressed open. So I suggest steam. Uh, if you're a fan, go for it. I hope you all enjoyed putting together your Lucky Charm pillow. So go ahead at this point and layer this with your batting and your muslin to quilt your pillow top in whatever way you want. I often do lots of straight lines in one direction. Um, then after it's quilted, trim if needed. You might have some little bit of wonkiness here and there. Trim it to get it square, make the pillow backing and you'll be good to go. Um, there have been some questions about what the muslin is for in the supply list. So I wanted to explain what the muslin's for. 
Once you finish your pillow top, you could just turn it into a pillow without quilting it, but I find that it looks better when it's quilted. It has some more strength, some more body. So the muslin is for your sandwich. Normally, you wanna make sure you have a pretty back to your quilt, but in this case, it doesn't really matter what the back is because the back is inside the pillow pocket. But we do wanna make sure we have a back, otherwise we'd have just batting here and it would start to get fuzzy. It would get caught in your feed dogs while you're quilting. So here you see I used a light gray. It doesn't have to be muslin, it can be any random thing in your stash, but just something to go on the back of the sandwich. Then you'll trim it down and follow the directions to make your two pieces that will um, serve as your back of your pillow and to make it a pocket so that it goes over a pillow form. Layer all of those together and sew around everything with a quarter of an inch and reinforce your corners and trim everything. And then you'll be left with a lovely little pillow cover. Slide a pillow form in there and you're good to go. Um, post your piecing progress to Instagram and make sure to use the hashtag journey to nebula to be entered in this week's giveaway. If you have any questions, leave a comment wherever you're watching this video. Remember, we also have the community Facebook group where people can help you out too. And I will be back next week to show you how we put together our jawbreaker pillow.